In my culture, death is not the end. It's more of a stepping off point. You reach out with both hands and bust and segment. They lead you into the green veld where you can run forever. On Friday, we all heard the terrible news that Chadwick Boseman passed away after a long fight against colon cancer. Myself and many, many others were devastated to hear this news. He was not only an incredible actor, but he was an incredible man, and it's clear how respected and loved he was by his friends and cast members. I've made a number of videos on MCU characters, and I thought this would be the perfect time to make the life of Black Panther, a recap slash tribute to the character T'Challa, and of course, a tribute to Chadwick Boseman. This will cover all MCU movies that T'Challa appeared in, as well as the MCU tie-in comics that were made to be part of the MCU films. There's a lot of information from these comics, and I've put all of this content together to make one cohesive timeline for his life. Now, there will be major spoilers for all MCU content, so you've been warned. Now, let's get started. T'Challa was born to T'Chaka and Ramanda in the hidden city of Wakanda, an isolated and hidden country located in Africa. T'Challa was the prince of Wakanda and the heir to the throne when his father T'Chaka passed. T'Challa also became an older brother to Shuri, and the brother and sister were very close while growing up. Growing up in Wakanda was unlike anything most people on Earth had ever experienced. T'Challa witnessed the most advanced technology in the world, all because of the crazy amount of vibranium underneath them, and even more, a plant that had mutated as a result of this metal, and when digested, it gave that person powers. This is what the Black Panther used to get his strength, and the current Black Panther was T'Challa's father, T'Chaka. T'Challa trained all his life to take his father's place as the next Black Panther, and he saw the potential he would one day have, seeing his father pick someone up with one hand, hold immense strength, and run insanely fast. As a kid, T'Challa became close with a girl named Nakia, and the two of them became fast friends. One day the two of them were playing in the catacombs, but were caught by T'Chaka. Nakia ran, and T'Chaka called T'Challa over. When he was in front of his father, T'Challa realized something was wrong with him. When he asked if his father was alright, T'Chaka told his son that he was forced to make a difficult choice that day. T'Challa, however, did not know the details of this difficult choice, which was for T'Chaka to kill his brother, T'Challa's uncle, and leave his nephew, T'Challa's cousin behind in California, leaving him now fatherless. The naive T'Challa responded to his father by using T'Chaka's own words, saying that every choice a king makes is difficult, and he was sure that his father did what was right for Wakanda, as he always had in the past. He then told his father that he was a great king, and that he would live forever. When T'Chaka asked what would happen when he was old and they would carry him away, T'Challa said that he would be the Black Panther by then and would beat them back with his panther claws. T'Chaka laughed and hugged his son. Eventually, T'Chaka told T'Challa that he was done being the Black Panther and he passed the mantle down to his son. T'Challa might have been the heir to the throne, but he had a great dislike for politics despite his father's constant efforts to get T'Challa more involved and invested in them. Though he wasn't very interested in politics, however, T'Challa was still one of the brightest minds Wakanda had seen in many years. One week after becoming the Black Panther, there were some Congo rebels invading outside the borders of Wakanda, and when it looked like they were about to win, spreading violence and death, T'Challa swooped in and took them all out single-handedly. However, before he disappeared, he was seen by a UN peacekeeper. On his way back to the city of Wakanda, he got word that his father was asking for his immediate presence in his office, and when he got there, his father told him that after just a week of holding the mantle of Black Panther, he already walked as if he'd been Black Panther for a lifetime, and T'Chaka said that this made him very happy. He then told his son that he missed holding the mantle, and then said on a more serious note that because he was still king, he would be held responsible if T'Challa was seen by the outside world, and he mentioned the UN peacekeeper who had just seen him. He lectured T'Challa and told him that he should have knocked those from the outside world out before showing himself. T'Challa responded saying that perhaps if he had been raised differently, and T'Chaka touched his son's face and told him how much he reminded him of himself. As he began walking, T'Chaka asked his son if he had seen the most recent reports on Tony Stark, and T'Challa said yes, calling Stark the Iron Man, as Tony had just revealed who he was to the world hours before this conversation. I am Iron Man. 
Tachaka said that Tony was an impulsive man driven by his emotions and said that that could bring a lot of attention when left unchecked. He told T'Challa that they themselves could not afford to act carelessly as a nation and that they must maintain their position in the shadows. He went on to say that the duty of the Black Panther is not just the protection of their borders, but of their people as well. T'Chaka then told his son that they had received intelligence regarding a hostage situation in South America, a group of mercenaries who had kidnapped two Wakandans. He told T'Challa that he was leaving it up to the Black Panther to rectify the situation quietly and above all, carefully. T'Challa got frustrated when his operatives could not locate the mercenaries, asking how they couldn't do this with the brightest minds and unsurpassed technologies at their disposal, but eventually they located them in Paraguay. Before leaving though, T'Challa was warned to take care when approaching this group of people, as they were pretty dangerous. When leaving for his mission, T'Challa was annoyed to find a member of the Dora Milaje waiting at a ship, and he asked who she was. She answered that her name was Okoye, and she said that the king asked her to accompany him on his mission. T'Challa said angrily that his father did not think he could do this on his own, and Okoye answered saying that the king thought she could learn from T'Challa. But then they both went on to say the truth, and said that the king wanted her there to report on his progress, and T'Challa thanked her. When she asked for what, T'Challa said for being honest, as he could now trust her to not hold back in her assessment of him. When they tracked where the hostages were, Okoye advised T'Challa to remain hidden, and T'Challa responded saying of course, and said that the mercenaries may be expecting somebody, but they would not be expecting him. They jumped out of the ship and onto the building, and they took the guards out easily, especially with T'Challa's bulletproof Black Panther suit. While Okoye went to free the hostages, T'Challa took out more of the guards, bullets bouncing off of him. However, things took a turn for the worse, as Okoye was hit in the head and fell to the ground, a hostage was taken and had a knife held to her throat, and T'Challa was shot with a vibranium bullet, meaning it was able to penetrate his vibranium Black Panther armor. T'Challa and Okoye were able to get the upper hand again however, as T'Challa, even with the bullet wound, got to the woman who shot him, and Okoye was able to free the hostage with the knife held to her throat, and get all of the other hostages on the move and to safety. As the hostages were running, T'Challa jumped in front of them to stop bullets from hitting them. He then took out another guard and made his way back to Okoye. As the police burst in, the two they were fighting got away, and when Okoye tried to go after them, T'Challa grabbed her arm and told her no, as they needed to leave right away. When she asked if they were letting them go free, T'Challa said no, instead having the two criminals lead them right to their base of operations. When they got back on their ship, Okoye apologized for losing her composure, and T'Challa told her not to worry, as they hadn't lost anything yet. They followed the two mercenaries as they got onto a freighter, and as T'Challa went after the woman who had shot him, she tried to hit him with a grenade, but he got to her before she could throw it, and it blew her up. T'Challa then jumped in to help Okoye take the other guys down, and after beating them, she thanked him. But T'Challa said that there was no thanks necessary, as it seemed as though she had it covered herself. When they returned to Wakanda, they were met by the king who thanked Okoye. When she left, T'Challa was told by his father that Okoye said he was highly effective in the field as the Black Panther, and he responded saying that Okoye was of valuable assistance as well. T'Chaka told his son that modesty was a valuable trait, and that T'Challa was clearly learning well. As they stared out over the Black Panther statue, T'Chaka told his son that there was still much to teach him. Over the next 10 years, T'Chaka taught T'Challa so much, giving him wisdom, new outlook on the world, and made him a better Black Panther, a better man, and a better heir to the throne. They grew even closer than before, and they bonded over both sharing the mantle of the Black Panther. A lot of his training also involved Okoye, and the two of them became very good friends and worked amazingly well together while in the field. T'Challa also grew closer to Nakia during this time. They had been friends since they were small kids, and now that they were older, they began dating each other. They dated for a while, but they split apart, as T'Challa was groomed to be the king and learned how to be a better Black Panther while in Wakanda, while Nakia left Wakanda to join the War Dogs, meaning she went on missions in the outside world. Because of this, the two did not work out, at least not yet. It was clear that T'Chaka greatly disliked Tony Stark 10 years before this, so it was only natural that he disliked the Avengers, especially after all the damage they caused. Because of this, T'Chaka supported the Sokovia Accords, which would keep the Avengers in line and regulated moving forward, and T'Challa joined his father as T'Chaka went to show support for the Accords, though T'Challa begged his father not to do this. While there, T'Challa met Natasha Romanoff, and he realized that she was just like him, more action, less politics, and he said that he was glad she was there because of this. 
Before T'Chaka spoke, the father and son had a touching moment where T'Chaka touched T'Challa's face and T'Challa kissed his father's fist. What they didn't know was that this was their last exchange while both were alive. During his father's speech, T'Challa saw signs of an explosion coming and tried to jump and save his father, but he was unable to make it to him in time. In the chaos, he crawled to his father and checked his pulse, and unable to feel one, he screamed in agony knowing his father was gone. He held his father close and rocked, crying tears of absolute devastation and sadness. With his father's passing, T'Challa was to take on the role of king when he got home, but he did not care. All he wanted was revenge for his father's death, and he was going to do it his way. He decided to expose the Black Panther to the world for the first time, despite his father's wishes to keep it a secret from the world. Romanoff met T'Challa outside and told him that she was sorry for his loss. He responded saying that he was not his father, and Romanoff understanding what was going through his head said that Bucky Barnes, the supposed terrorist responsible for the explosion, would be brought in by the task force and they would decide his punishment. But T'Challa told her not to bother, as he would kill Bucky himself. T'Challa found Bucky as he was running from the task force, and he went after him on his own, but he was forced to fight off not only the task force as he did so, but Captain America as well. The fight and chase ended with the three of them being caught, and T'Challa took his mask off for everyone to see, shocking them all when they realized that he was the soon-to-be king of Wakanda. While being taken in, T'Challa talked with Falcon and Captain America, and he told them the history of the Black Panther. The Black Panther has been the protector of Wakanda for generations. A mantle passed from warrior to warrior. He then said that because of Bucky, he now wore the mantle of warrior and king, and he asked Cap how long he thought he could keep Bucky safe from him. How long do you think you can keep your friend safe from me? T'Challa was given an office instead of a cell, and when they told him not to leave, T'Challa said that he did not plan on going anywhere, still intent on ending the man that took his father away from him. While in his office, Romanoff visited him and admitted that she was surprised with a secret identity and said that their last conversation now made more sense. She then said that she was impressed with his Black Panther suit, but told him that he was now under the Sokovia Accords jurisdiction, the very thing his father was fighting to be put into place to have the government watch over superheroes like the Avengers, and now like himself. Romanoff then said that she knew he wasn't into politics, but that there was a chance he might be being a bit naive. Before he could respond to this, however, Everett Ross entered clapping, saying that he had gotten extradition. T'Challa did not leave even though he was granted to, as he wanted to wait and see what would happen to Bucky. But before he got his verdict, Bucky escaped, and T'Challa actually saved Romanoff's life as she was being choked to death by Bucky. T'Challa then fought Bucky in hand-to-hand -hand combat and held his own even without his suit and against Bucky's metal arm. He slammed Bucky against the wall and off the stairwell, but by the time he got down there, Bucky had escaped, clearly realizing that he could not hold his own against the Black Panther for much longer. T'Challa joined the Avengers Civil War, taking Iron Man and the Accord side, though he did not really care about any of that. All he wanted to do was take Bucky down. T'Challa used his suit to put a scratch on Captain America's vibranium shield, which up until this point was pretty much indestructible. As T'Challa chased after Bucky and Captain America who were about to escape, he was hit by Romanoff who held him off while Bucky and Cap flew away. T'Challa later went on to follow Iron Man, knowing he would lead him right to Bucky. When he got there, however, T'Challa overheard Helmut Zemo admit that he was the one behind the explosion that killed T'Challa's father, not Bucky. Zemo apologized for his father's death, saying that he was not meant to die, and Zemo then told T'Challa about how his family had died because of the Avengers' response when fighting Ultron. Recognizing his own rage in Zemo, and seeing how vengeance had consumed not only Zemo, but himself as well, T'Challa decided to spare Zemo, and even stopped him from committing suicide, telling him that the living were not done with him yet. He then tied Zemo up and took him aboard his ship. He then met Captain America and Bucky after their fight with Iron Man, and they were surprised to see T'Challa. T'Challa told the two that Zemo was not going anywhere, and he then apologized to Bucky for everything that happened, and said that he now knew Bucky was not responsible for his father's death. He then said that it was them that led him to the truth, and for that, he wanted to offer his assistance. He told Bucky that the mental programming that was in his head, forcing him to lose control and do others' bidding, might be able to be fixed in Wakanda. Bucky was at a loss for words and thanked T'Challa. T'Challa said that he must first deliver Zemo to receive his punishment, but after that, he would be in touch. Before being crowned king, T'Challa went to retrieve Nakia from her current mission, as he wished her to be present during his coronation. 
When he told Nakia about his father's death, she was saddened and agreed to come with him. She comforted him on the way back to Wakanda, holding his hand and staring at him in a warm way. When they arrived, T'Challa's mother told him that she was proud of him, and that she and his father had been waiting for T'Challa's coronation for a long time, saying it was now his time to be king. At his coronation, he had the strength of the Black Panther taken away from him, a tradition to allow other tribes to fight for the title of king, but every tribe said no. But then the Jabari tribe showed up, and Dumbaku challenged T'Challa. T'Challa won by making Umbaku tap out, not wanting to kill him because he knew that Umbaku's people needed him. After the fight, T'Challa was made the rightful king. T'Challa then went through the process to become the Black Panther again, and he was taken to the ancestral plane where he saw his father for the first time since his death. T'Challa got on his knees and began to cry, saying sorry, but T'Chaka told him to get up because he was a king now. He told his father that he was not ready to be without him, and when T'Chaka asked if he had ever failed him, T'Challa said never. T'Challa then asked for his father's advice on how to rule Wakanda, and his father told him that because he was a good man, it would be hard for T'Challa to be king. T'Challa spent some time with Nakia and was very happy to be in her company again. However, Nakia told him that she had to leave again, wanting to help more of those outside of Wakanda, something that disappointed T'Challa a great deal. When they discovered an ancient Wakanda artifact was stolen by a man named Ulysses Claw, a man who had given Wakanda a lot of trouble in the past, T'Challa decided to go after him. Before leaving, Shuri gave T'Challa a new and more high-tech Black Panther suit that was able to absorb and reuse the force of any hit he took, and T'Challa used this technology along with the help of Akoya and Nakia, and a bit of help from Shuri as well to track Claw down. They had him in their custody, but Claw was rescued by his team, and T'Challa was unable to get there in time. However, he did see one of them, who went by the name of Killmonger, and he was wearing a ring identical to his own around his neck, something that T'Challa knew had come from his grandfather. During the chaos, Agent Ross was badly hurt, and T'Challa had a tough choice to make as to whether or not he should bring him into Wakanda, but ultimately, he said he could not let him die, and he brought him to Shuri, who patched him up. He then went to find out more about the ring, and he found out the truth of how his father had killed his uncle, and that he had a cousin who his father had abandoned, the very person T'Challa had just seen with the ring around his neck. T'Challa was horrified to hear this news, and he vented to Nakia about this, and she helped him feel better. Killmonger then showed up and challenged T'Challa for the throne, and T'Challa accepted. The fight did not end in T'Challa's favor, however, as Killmonger beat him and threw him off the cliff and into the water. Everyone thought him dead, but he was found and brought to Umbaku, where T'Challa's mother, sister, Agent Ross, and Nakia showed up. They restored his Black Panther power again, and it was almost too late, as T'Challa was being welcomed to the afterlife by his father. T'Challa told his father that he could not stay, as Killmonger was a monster of their own making, and he had to right his father's wrongs. T'Challa returned and fought Killmonger, and an all-out war broke out, split between the Black Panther and Killmonger's side. Right before he was about to kill Shuri, T'Challa tackled Killmonger, and the two had a one-on-one -on -one fight that T'Challa won, stabbing Killmonger in the stomach. T'Challa let his cousin's final moments be graced with the beauty of Wakanda, and he watched as his cousin let himself die. T'Challa took back the throne and he asked Nakia to stay, saying that he knew a way that she could still help people outside of Wakanda while staying there with him, and she agreed to the delight of T'Challa. T'Challa took his sister to California in the very location where their father had killed their uncle, and he told her that he bought the very building where the murder happened, and a few others around it as well, and he said that he was turning it into the first Wakanda International Outreach Center, Nakia overseeing the social outreach, and Suri would look over the science and information exchange. T'Challa then set up a press conference where he planned to reveal Wakanda to everybody, sharing their knowledge and resources with the outside world for the first time. Before going in, however, Agent Ross told him that he did not think it was a good idea to do this, as people would fear their power and go after them. T'Challa agreed with him, but then said he would no longer rule out of fear, and Agent Ross said that he would do his best to hold them off his back, which T'Challa thanked him for. When the conference started, he said that himself and Wakanda were ready to share all that they had, and when asked what they had to share, T'Challa simply smiled, amused with how little they knew. T'Challa kept his promise and had Bucky and Cap come to Wakanda to help restore Bucky's mind. Cap was hesitant about this, however, but T'Challa said that the only way to fix him was to put Bucky back in a cryo-freeze. He told them that the scientist leading this initiative was the most gifted in Wakanda and said that he trusted her with his life, and the scientist ended up being T'Challa's sister, Shuri. 
After putting Bucky under, T'Challa walked over to Cap, and Cap thanked him. T'Challa answered saying that both his father and Bucky were victims, and said that he was happy to give at least one of them peace. Cap responded saying that if they found out Bucky was there, they'd come for him, and T'Challa told Cap to let them try. Months later, T'Challa was called down to the lab, and when he asked Shuri if she had made a breakthrough with Bucky, she responded saying how difficult it was to do this because she had to be careful not to erase Bucky's mind and personality altogether. T'Challa said that he was waiting for the part where she tells him good news, and Shuri told him that she's working on an algorithm that is able to flush the influence of the programming out, while still retaining the core context and content of the original memories that had been altered through the programming, essentially meaning that she could reboot Bucky. She then said even more excitedly that this algorithm should provide greater advancements in Wakanda's own artificial intelligence applications in the near future. She then said that it was so much simpler than the silly shortcut Tony Stark took when creating Ultron, and she then smiled and said that she was smarter than Tony Stark. T'Challa joked and said that she put a lot of work into telling him how smart she was, and they ended the conversation saying that Bucky could dream in peace for now, and T'Challa said that that would make Captain America very happy to hear. Not long after that, T'Challa was approached by the Avengers that were currently on Earth, and they asked for his and Wakanda's help. T'Challa of course agreed, and he had Shuri take the Infinity Stone out of Vision using Wakanda's technology. Meanwhile, they held the Black Order off to buy Shuri more time to get the stone out, and the Battle of Wakanda took place. Wakanda forever! They fought hard, but ultimately Thanos had the last laugh, killing Vision, taking the stone, and snapping his fingers to wipe out half the universe. Half the population in the universe blew away like smoke, including T'Challa. T'Challa was thought dead for 5 years, but the remaining Avengers managed to bring back the population that was snapped away, and Black Panther along with Shuri and Okoye arrived to help in the fight, and T'Challa nodded to Captain America, ready to fight by his side. The entire army from Wakanda then returned, along with every Avenger, Guardian, and Hero. Black Panther led his army with pride. An all-out battle commenced against Thanos and his army, Black Panther on the front lines. During the battle, they were trying to get the Infinity Gauntlet to the Time Machine, and T'Challa told Hawkeye to give it to him. He took it and ran off with it, taking a good number of people out as he did so. He was hit by Thanos' staff, however, and dropped the gauntlet, but he got it back and passed it off to Spider-Man. The gauntlet eventually got to Tony Stark, who used it to sacrifice himself and win the fight once and for all. T'Challa watched as Thanos and Thanos' army floated away into dust, just as he had five years before this. T'Challa returned home, once again king of the magnificent Wakanda, and as he held his mother and sister lovingly, he watched as his people celebrated all of their loved ones' return. Not long after that, T'Challa, Shuri, and Okoye attended Tony Stark's funeral to honor his sacrifice. This unfortunately is where T'Challa's story ends. Black Panther 2 was supposed to begin early production for a 2022 release date, but now they'll obviously have to change their plans. Many Marvel fans have cried out not to replace Bozeman, and I agree 100%. Bozeman's loss leaves my heart feeling very heavy, and this video is a tribute to the incredible man and actor that he was. He will be so missed, a real life hero battling colon cancer and still being able to play a strong and convincing superhero. Please rest in peace, Chadwick. We all love you for the amazing man you were and the difference you made during your time on Earth. Thank you so much for watching, guys. You can follow me on social media to see more of my personal life and see more of this little dude. You can follow me on Twitter and Facebook for Movie Flame updates. And I want to give a huge shout out to all my patrons listed below. If you want to be featured in the next video, plus get a bunch of other rewards, become a patron today. Again, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you press that like button and subscribe, and look out for more great videos on the way.